how is parenting boys different from parenting girls? It's different in a lot of ways, right? You heard some of our fears that we have that you were, wow, I've never even thought about those things before. Mm -hmm. So I love that you said that out loud because it just highlights the fact that there, there really is a difference. And the difference is how the world treats our sweet boys. Generally speaking, when a girl is struggling, she might be struggling with aggression. <laughs> she might be struggling with any kind of behavior, might be struggling in school. Generally, when a girl is struggling, we look for what systems are failing her, right? What's wrong with the environment? What can we do to make things better so that she can be better? Yet when a boy is struggling, our go-to is that it's his fault and there's something wrong with him. That's the default. And if th we see this all the time in schools, it's just blatant, but we do it in our families too. I'm trying to think about like, if a girl's struggling versus a boy's struggling and a, when a boy struggles, there's something wrong with him. Right? And I'm trying to think about an example of that way of thinking, because a lot of times we have these ways of thinking that we've just inherited from culture and society and things like that. And we don't even mm -hmm. realize that the underlying message of whatever I'm thinking or saying is, for example, like there's something wrong with him. Like sometimes we don't even see that's right. the message. So I'm just wondering right. if there's like an example of, of how that comes forward commonly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it comes forward in lots of ways. I can think of lots of examples. I can think of example once when one of my kids was playing soccer and he was cleated and his kind of cleat in his neck and it hurt. Yeah. Because if you got a cleat in your neck, it would hurt. <laughs> and he was on the soccer field and he was crying and it hurt. And his coach threatened him with not playing the next game if he didn't get his stuff together and get back up and let's get back to the game kind of a thing. That's and so, oh so that's right. So that's basically <laughs> saying something is wrong with you that you're responding this mm -hmm. way, right? Mm -hmm. Not, oh, maybe we should reconsider how we respond to a child when they are hurt playing the sport. I don't have a, I don't have any girls, but I will say that I can, I would bet my life on the fact that a girl playing soccer, the likelihood of her not being berated in that way or threatened in that way is about 99%. Instead, yeah. she would get something like, oh, you know, a pat on the back or, hey, why don't you go sit on the bench for a few minutes and come back in when you're feeling better. So it's, it's a lack of blame and it's in more of an acceptance of the feelings that are there than we have with the boys or in school boys get in trouble a lot more in school than girls do even for the same behaviors you know we look at suspensions we look at even expulsions from preschools i mean mostly boys mostly boys and you've got girls right girls struggle Girls do dumb things. Girls get in trouble. Um, but in a school scenario, oftentimes if a boy is yelling out in class, for example, he's much more likely to be sent to the principal's office, get time taken off recess. And mm -hmm. a girl is much more likely to get a soft warning, a whisper you know, to try to keep it together or... And even like a discussion, I think, in a staff meeting about what could we do to help. We just, our default is we look at them like there's something wrong, right? They have oppositional defiance disorder, they're ADHD. We're like throwing all these labels at them and they might have labels and that's okay too. But that doesn't mean we don't take the time to both connect with them and look at whether or not the expectations that we have for them are realistic. Like yeah. maybe we're asking this child, to sit still for way too long. I can't believe we still do that. It makes me so mad that we ask kids, like the whole thing, like the ki kindergarten and they're losing recess and things like that. It just is like crazy. Don't we know this by now? Come on, people. Like, Yeah. I just saw an article this morning just popped up in my feed. I think it said 250 kids a day are expelled from preschool. Okay, preschool, 250 a day. I think that was in Scientific American, if I'm remembering correctly. And half of those are black boys. 
Oh, God. Okay. I can assure you, so there's the whole issue of racism, and like we're looking, like our eyes are going to them. We're expecting them to be bad, right? In quotation marks. Mm. Uh, and I can assure you that a huge percent of that other 50% are other boys. Yeah, I'm sure. And it's this, yeah, and there's this lack of accommodation for the human body that needs to move, that needs to, and children that need to learn in their own way. It, the, it drives me bananas. And we also Boy. go to worry quicker, boys. So there's that, but then this, we also, we're so scared, even if we don't realize that we're so scared for what they're going to do or what their future is going to look like, that we react rather than take a breath and respond. Mm. 